um, we're going to have to get tough. Uh, the, one of the one of the problems with the the, the church is the church has been hiding. You know, sort of like if we don't make noise and be real still. <laughs> My dog was doing that today. It's so funny. My dog was on the side of the bed, and, and then you know, if a dog put hides his head, the dog think because you can't see, he can't see you, that you can't see him. So he think he's hiding with his whole body out, but his head is under the bed. So, uh, and and that's how we have been. He's thinking that if he be real still, that I don't know he's right there. And that's how we are. We, we, we thought that if we just be real quiet and cool, tolerant, that they would leave us alone. But as, but as you see, they're not, they're not stopping in their assault. Uh, they, are, they are eroding every Christian liberty we have. You know, we, my, when my wife was talking earlier about, you know, the girl Kim Davis that was denying uh, the, 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 the gay marriage, the licenses. Now, she uh, made a compromise and said, okay, y'all can get a license, but I ain't going to sign it. And now they came back and was like, no. Nah. Then they accepted that compromise. Then they came back and said, no, nah, we want her to sign it. See, it wasn't enough for them to get what they wanted. They had to actually, see, they don't, they don't, they see the problem with that sin, that particular sin, is they not satisfied with, compl with compliance. They want you in agreement. They want you in agreement in your heart. It's not enough. They don't want you to feel it disagreement in your heart so it's not enough for, for you uh, to to tolerate that you have to uh, promote it they want you to promote them that's why they have their parades and all of their pageantry and stuff because they love to be promoted this is the spirit of Lucifer that loves attention and love to be promoted um, the point I'm making is if you if you look at what's happening in our culture it's not just gays and stuff but but uh, Thus come in a, uh, what I call an ex exhibitionism, uh, which means the uh, people are um, proud of exposing their sin. It used to be we had shame from certain things. We wouldn't even do certain things. But now we, ha we, are, we have, there's a sense of um, entitlement that uh, the world owes me a stage. Everybody is supposed to applaud me in my wrong, in my sin, and that's what you see uh, with 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 how they parade. Now, I was telling my wife about this thing called "shout out your abortion," where now, when it, abortion is a total thing of shame, it's a murder, it's a it's you're a murderer, but yet the women now because of all of the warfare, all of the Christian warfare against Planned Parenthood and the, trying to get them defunded and, you know, and all type, because that's messing with their power base. That's messing with the witch power, witch's power base. But anyway, they came up with this, this somebody, some atheist or some silly woman, which came up with this idea to no longer be shamed about abortion, but to put out a Twitter hashtag to get women to come on and shout out how they abortion was better made their life better and true to form that silly women are see these are the sort that's creeping in the house of silly women ever learning but never come to the knowledge of the truth silly women will fall for anything as long as enough of them do it you have followers so you got women on there actually shouting out the abortion and I'm so glad that I uh, uh, aborted my child at, when I was 20 because uh, now my career is much better see this is the stuff they doing There is no concealment of sin. I just heard uh, on a site called Salon.com where they are have a pedophile owner, um, and he is um, promoting pedophilia and trying to normalize this as a sexual option. Now, that would have been a sin that nobody would have wanted to associate with themselves, but they're, they're no longer hiding any sins. The reason is because they are transforming. You don't, see, you don't see what's going on, but they are transforming this culture into a pagan culture, a total, a total 
uh, antichrist society. Is Obama's doing it? Every law he's passing, every 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 religion is getting their dues except the Christians. Everybody can come here. Look at how they acted over this pope. Look at how people acted about this pope. This antichrist spirit come in the country and they worshiping this dude. And I'm sitting there saying, man, if, you know, that's why I said I'm glad I'm not. I'm glad I'm saving. I'm not false. Because if I wasn't, I'd come up with the greatest lie for y'all. I, I, I deceive y'all because I've seen people want to be deceived. The Bible says in the last days, God going to send a strong delusion so that they may believe a lie because that's what they want to do. You believe an old man is God. That's the craziest thing in the world. This guy, when they, when they, when they were singing, the, 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 when they were singing, he was asleep. Now, the Bible says that, that Elijah said, is y'all God sleep? Does he not hear? We, the Bible said we serve a God that needs to sleep nor slumber. But this guy was asleep, on the throne asleep. But I don't understand how they get away with that. But anyway, my point is, is the reason why men accept the word, uh, what, what's a better word? Now I won't say wordness. Extreme. Extreme sin. The reason why men would accept extreme sin is because of their own sin. Nobody is against, um, nobody is um, against, um, nobody is against uh, wrong except those that do wrong. I mean, nobody is against those. Like if you go on Facebook and you talk about this is a sin, this is a sin, you know who going to respond? Those in sin. Those in sin was one. See, it used to be where if I don't agree, I'm done, but I ain't going to say nothing. But now it's like, no. They pull out the guns and knives and be ready to argue and fight, and they're going to literally pull out guns and knives in a little while. They're already attacking you, call your employer, trying to get you in trouble. That's what they're doing now because they, they realize that they have, they have gotten law just in our... In our now, why would, why would this man, why would Obama put a fag over the military? The, the highest ranking military leader now is a homosexual, openly homosexual. Don't y'all see what's happening? I don't know if y'all get what's happening. They're transforming this into a pagan, Roman, Greek, Sodom and Gomorrah culture. And it's going to be nothing off limits. It's going to be nothing off limits. Every city is being turned into this culture. Now... I don't have a problem with anybody that wants to do wrong with anybody's butt that's on them. Whatever you want to do, too sweaty, man, y'all do what y'all want to do. Whatever y'all women want to do, that's on y'all. I don't care nothing about what you do. My problem is you, they used to hide it. There used to be a shame in it that I know this is a perversion. And so, I, and, and it used to be that if we were to find this out, you would lose in, public, in, in society. Now you're promoted in society for this perversion. Are y'all there? Look at Isaiah chapter 3. The reason why I'll show you this is because you're going to have to explain this to your children. Because they're not hiding it. Therefore, your child is going to see this. And they're going to have to get an understanding of what is this. I was looking at a picture on Facebook about five transsexuals that if I caught them in a the club... I I had, and that's the first time I ever said, if I was in the world, I would have hollered at all of them. They was look finer than women. I'm not lying to you. Transsexuals. And I said, man, these brothers, and I said, these brothers is going to be gay because they're not, they not going to, because they're not going to really care that this is the, you know, so, so they doing everything to assault the male. They doing everything to assault the male. Now you think that the lesbians are with the are, are, are for the are, would seem to be uh, 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 not against the male, but that's not true either, because the lesbians actually get pregnant by the male and still be with their lesbian partner and then take the male to child support court. She wasn't even supposed to be having no babies. I thought you won't. Why don't you cut that out? But still, even the lesbians got brothers in child support court. Everybody's against the male. It's all against the male. I told y'all it's against the male because Satan is effeminate. <laughs> I try to teach y'all that. Now, 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 let me blow your mind. I'm going. I'm gonna go deep. I'm gonna go deep. Why do you think Satan came to Eve? Notice Adam was created first. Satan never came to Adam at all. Adam was there the whole time, but he never came to Adam. Why do you think he came to Eve? 
He never tried to come to Adam at all. He didn't try Adam. It was a reason he didn't try Adam and he couldn't get Adam. It's not that he didn't try, he couldn't get Adam. And that was the reason that he couldn't get Adam. But when he saw Eve, he understood he could get Eve. The reason why he could go to Eve and not to Adam because Satan has a feminine frequency. And he knew how to talk to the woman. The man does not have a feminine frequency, so he was hearing God, he couldn't listen to the Satan. What got the man was the need for his woman. See, all this time, we've been thinking that it was just the fact that man and woman were equal and he just went to Eve and just tricked Eve because Eve was listening. No, he tricked Eve because him and Eve had something in common. That's why the Bible said the war would be against you, Eve, your seed, and his seed. Because Satan knows the frequency of the woman because he is effeminate. So he couldn't get at him, but who gets the man all the time? The woman gets the man. Whenever we fall, we fall from the woman. We have a need for the woman, but the woman listens to the serpent because she has the serpent frequency. That's all. That's all. That's all. I don't. I, now I know. I, now I told y'all I was gonna blow y'all up on that, and I know it's very difficult for y'all to understand. But every culture, they every cult, every pagan religion worships woman. Every false god culture worships a woman. You can't really name none. Krishna over in Hinduism, Egypt, all of them had women gods. Our God is the only God that was a male God with no female counterpart. That's why they're trying to say our God was a female, has a female counterpart. That's what they're coming up with now. That's what the Shekinah really was about. Saying that our God is male and female. Well, that's an amorphodite, which is uh, the Baphomet goat. That's Satan. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Our God is a male. He's masculine. See, when the Bible says Adam was created in the image and likeness, the masculine image of God, that's why Satan hates the masculine image. No, he don't hate the... See, you think he hates all people because of female and male. No, it ain't, it ain't that he hates the female. That's why he don't really kill y'all. We die way before y'all do. Everything in, in society is for y'all now. But the male is the one that's always destroyed. He hates the masculine image. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Are y'all there? Because the masculine image is the image of our God. Y'all got what I'm saying? Now y'all got to catch what I'm telling y'all because a lot of you sisters have to learn how to the Bible says cast down every thought that uh, exalts up against the knowledge of God. You got to learn how to cast down the serpent frequency. Y'all listen to stuff. Why, why, y do y'all know, why didn't, why didn't the devil show Eve a picture? Because he, he knows he can get women without their ears. Y'all listen. That's how men get women. We know that. We've been knowing that for years. We can tell y'all anything we want to. We can tell y'all we just walked across the Ohio River on water with, no, with our feet. And y'all believe it if y'all, if we say it long enough and long enough and long enough, you, did, did he really do you'll be calling people did he really walk across you'll be trying to really figure it out because y'all believe whatever a man tell you are y'all hearing what I'm saying and so he understands that women are, 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 are uh, hearing creatures y'all listen men are seeing creatures we see if he get, if he want to get us he had to get uh, he had to get y'all remember when Judah got caught up and he was uh, didn't give tank getting he didn't give Tamar his son and he was going to share his sheep and to get Judah she uh, she took her clothes off see that's how he get us he got to we got to see it the reason why Adam married Eve <laughs> God did not say Adam Eve this is your wife God didn't say you had to marry her he brought a naked woman to Adam and Adam said this is bone of my bone he saw it we are seeing creatures that's why pornography grips us as men so much. But while men are in visual pornography, women are usually be reading into pornographic reading. They be all in the stories. <laughs> in the story pornography. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? I'm not saying they won't look at pictures, but I'm saying it really, what catches women is conversation. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Now that right there should have told y'all how different we really are. 
if we don't know the differences, then the problem is they told us we was all the same. So we're trying to give each other the wrong thing. If I know my woman's different from me, then I know what to give my woman. But if I, if I think she's like me, then I'm going to try to give her what I need her to give me. And she's going to try to give me what I, and then we gonna, it's going to be a problem. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so you have to understand, remember I taught you the Christ frequency. There's a serpent frequency. And most women listen to it daily. <laughs> Y'all don't want to talk no more. I don't want to. They be, even it's on TV. It's in everything they put it in. Every, everything, the, 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 the serpent frequency is hyper-emotionalism. It's to pull you into your emotions. I advertise to do it to y'all all the time. To make you feel, make you feel everything with a woman is about feeling. It's about feeling. If they, if they try to t make you take this purple pill, they're going to have a woman with feeling music and emotional music riding on a bike on, in the sand and, and with the sun. They're going to make you feel something. When they try to, when they, when, 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 when they, when they want you to buy something, they scare you. Yeah, scare you. That's why they always advertise slim chicks to y'all. Make you, make you look at your own self. And you'll buy that just because a slim chick had it on and you don't like your own self. Or most of y'all hate yourself based on the serpent signal. I ain't, I ain't gonna really get into that today. But I want to tell y'all there is one. If you brothers don't know it, you need to know some of you brothers should know that by now. Your woman will listen to the devil. And some of y'all know you come home and don't know what is the, what has happened here. What is the when I left her this morning, wasn't all this, but she done been listening to something. You know, they be having friends or they just sitting there watching TV, listen to the signal on 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 uh, divorce court or listen to the signal. One of the words <laughs> listen to the signals on 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 on, on Maury or some show or you know, and she come home and it's cause she's received all that stuff. Are y'all heard what I'm saying? Satan figures y'all out. He knows a woman to listen. You can't even lie. You know in your own mind you listen. Y'all want to know stuff. That's why social media has y'all bound. Most women are bound in social media. Men are bound in pornography. But women are bound in social media. They have to be on her. On her constantly. Update, 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 constantly update. Needing the affirmation. Needing, needing people to be connected to them all day long. Because he knows that y'all need that affirmation. Men don't need that. Are y'all there? And it's really a trick to get your self-worth out of what somebody else thinks. Now let me show you something. Lord, I'm really on another message here. Let's go there. Let's go there. I was going to talk about them hiding, not having any sin, but this message is flowing better. So let's go with the message that's flowing. Go to Genesis 3. So if I was to title this, it would be the serpent signal. The serpents, the serpents signal. You hear that, Hannah? The serpents signal. Now, now, now listen to me, listen to me. What is Satan doing? He is everything that you're receiving, whether it be movies, whether it be radio, TV, you're hearing the same signal. Because the goal is to effeminize. Then notice that even though, notice that Satan really doesn't even have a problem with the, with, with the, see, see, listen to me. When, now, when the women, when women receive a certain signal, you think that they would become lesbians. But that's not true. Lesbians are copiers. They just copycatting what they see the men doing. When the women see a certain signal, they become goddesses. They want to be more beautiful. They want to be hyper beautiful. They want to use all the makeup and all of that because that's really what he's trying to get them to do because he's going to use them to seduce and allure men. Are y'all hearing what he's saying? Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Now, let me show you. Look at, look at verse 1. Look at verse 1. Everything about relationships is in Genesis. Or actually, in Genesis, the first, I say, 10 books of Genesis, you can learn everything about relationships. Look at verse 1. It says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Now that word subtle is the word cunning. Cunning, slick, sneaky. And uh, which the Lord God had made. And the, really the name, the word serpent is not a word. It's really a sound. It's the whisper. Serpent is the whisper that a snake makes. It's, a tss, it's the whisper. Because that's Satan's goal, is to whisper. See, he whispered, he was whispering to the woman. 
And he said unto the woman, Yea, had God said, You should not eat of every tree of the garden, which was true. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit which is in the midst of the garden, uh, God has said, You shall not eat it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Now, most preachers get caught up on the neither shall you touch it. And see, she deviated from what, you know, God, you know, she deviated from the fact of touching. That's not really what, the whole, that ain't even the point. The whole point was she heard what God said. If Adam had to tell her what God had said, now the serpent said unto the woman, uh, you shall not surely die. Now this is the problem with us is that we miss, we so busy worrying about what Eve did, we forget the fact that Satan told her the truth. She didn't die. She did not die. Y'all heard what I'm saying? He told her the truth. See, this is y'all problem. Listen to me. You think people are not going to serve Satan because he's Satan. They going to serve him because he's Satan. They want him. Why? Because he told her, you going to be wise. Ain't no trick here, girl. You going to be wise. But no lie. Immediately they were wise. They knew good, good and evil. People going to serve Satan not because they deceived, but because of the promises he's making. We always have a mindset nobody would serve Satan if they knew he was Satan. But you're going to find that people going to serve him even though they know he's Satan. Are y'all there? Is this too much to understand? Listen to me. I want to show y'all. Verse 5. For God do it know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open. Did he lie? Did he lie? We keep always saying he was lying. He didn't lie right here. He told her the truth. You shall be as gods. That's man's mission in life. Without God, you'll want to be one. That's the man's mission, to become God. All this end time stuff is about becoming God. Knowing good, that's why every other religion is trying to get you to cross over to Godhood. Knowing good and evil, that was right. All of that was correct. What he did, what he lied about was their relationship with God. That's what he didn't tell her. He didn't tell her that if you do this, the power that you feel now is going to be gone. And everything that you get now, you're going to have to get from, uh, from you, you're going to have to get from his mercy. Because right now, y'all in his grace. Y'all got the power of God on y'all so heavy, y'all don't even know y'all naked. But after this, I'm going to make you switch power sources. And your sources is going to be knowledge. Listen to, listen to me. Your source going to be, that's why I'm trying to tell you, even though all this research people are doing, it ain't not, just because you know stuff don't necessarily mean you understand. You can research till your ass fall out. If you're not careful, you will, you will trade grace for knowledge. You will have a whole lot of knowledge, but you won't have any undeserving favor. What was better for me to walk in divine light and not have to worry about eating and taking care of it. I was eating by the, by the grace of God and all of a sudden now I got knowledge but with knowledge came what? Labor. Work. Now that I got knowledge now I got to work the ground. See God put man in a state of blissful ignorance. Listen to me. Now I'm going to say something that's going to mess y'all up because we've been trained not a, we've been trained against it so much but did you know the real, the real way that you walk with God to really understand God you got to become ignorant. That's why Paul said, everything that I have gained in this world, I counted all as dung. Why? Because he understood the things that the world has taught me will hinder my understanding of God. So when I come to God, I got to start, I got to start actually re, re -brain, uh, un brainwash myself from what I've learned. Because, because when I, because in my, in my, in my ignorance with him, I receive his wisdom. But his wisdom is foolishness. His wisdom is foolishness to what we call knowledge. Listen to me now. His, God's wisdom is foolishness to what we call knowledge. That's why we say, speak to the mountain. That's foolishness. Wisdom, knowledge would say get a bulldozer and bulldoze the mountain down. Or work, you know, go around, climb the mountain. That's foolishness. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? But in order for me to get God results, I got to unlearn. 
Now, now, now to unlearn, I got to stop climbing. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Now, every time something happens in my life, immediately we have the inclination, no matter what, as humans, we have an inclination to run. Right. Period. Over anything, we will run. Then that's knowledge. That's what people will teach you to do. He who runs and gets away lives to run another day. Well, that's knowledge. But in God, he says, stand therefore. That's foolishness. Now, why, why don't we know God? Because we know too much. Y'all ain't ready. You know too much. It's what you know that keeps you from understanding God. Because you're putting God in your finite understanding and not realizing that he's so beyond that. That he's, the whole goal of you renewing your mind to create, have the mind of Christ was to get you to unlearn. The, what, what are you unlearning? The knowledge. The knowledge of what? The tree of good and evil. Your whole life before you met Christ, you was being trained by the knowledge of the tree of good and evil. That's what's been training you your whole life. And you thought that was knowledge. That's why when you got saved, you found out how stupid you really was. Because you thought you had knowledge until you saw what, to, listen, you thought you had knowledge until you saw light. Now what light did was illuminated how stupid you are. And then once you see how stupid you are, you see your need. No, no, not to know, but to follow. Y'all ain't catching what I'm saying. Everybody want to know as if knowing is it. Not understanding that it's not knowing, it's following. That's why I said, if any man will come out to me, let him deny himself, pick up his cross, and then follow. It's about following. Now, what is wrong? What hinders us with God? We want to know. Before we follow, I want to know. Where are we going? What's it going to look like? Who going to be with me? What I'm going to have to give up? You want knowledge. So you're spending your time trying to gain knowledge of where you're going. That's why you don't go. But wisdom says, trust, follow. God got upset with Adam and Eve because what did you need to know for? What did you need to know? You had it all. You had it all by trust. No, I don't want trust. I want to know. What did Satan say? It's going to make you wise. You're going to know good and evil. Now, don't you understand how crazy that is that they was more blessed to not know? That's why the Bible says it's better for you not to have seen and then yet believe. It's better not to see it. The problem with knowledge is once you know it, you can't unknow it. And that's what your hindrances are. That's why to follow God, you got to really listen. You, the reason why it's hard to follow God because your whole life has been created to be an atheist. So the God concepts and understandings will evade you because you've been trained against it your whole life. If I, if, 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 there's, there, there's a law that you think is a real law, and that's the reason why you don't think that any, that's why, that's why you think that that law, if that law that you have in your mind, you think that that law is a, is, is, is a, is a sustaining law. In other words, it's always going to be. And I'm going to show you. Gravity makes, gravity got you thinking what goes up must come down. That's what you believe. The reason why you can't understand God is because God don't have to operate by gravity he don't have to he don't operate in those laws now why don't why can't you get that because you know what do you know you know what goes up must come down but he don't operate in them laws so to sit in his class and say well I don't, that, that ain't what, what they, they, you gonna fail me why why because I'm ignorant I'm, 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 I don't want to know that but in order for me to pass I'm forced to know well, you forced a law on me that's going to interrupt my understanding with God. Yeah. So your whole life is, this is what's happened to you, and all of it has just undone, uh, un, it's all of it has kept you from believing God. So once you got saved, now you got to renew your mind and be retrained. Listen, listen, be retrained in ignorance. Except you be as a child. You got to go all the way back to an impressionable child and believe a, B, C, D, E, all over again. 
Do y'all get what I'm saying? And what now, now everywhere you go, Kemetic brothers, Hebrew Israelites, um, uh, Muslims, uh, Hindus, any occult, anybody you talk to, any religion, what is their goal? To know. They want as many books, as much knowledge as they read. Why? They're trying to know. We have, a, we have a, 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 a God that we serve that says, you ain't got to know. I'll just, just follow. <laughs> Do y'all hear what I'm saying? You ain't got to know. Just follow. Ah, we, ah. I can't do that. Are y'all, are y'all seeing what I'm saying? So then we, so then our God starts talking about concepts like you don't need to see it to have it because if you can believe it, you already got it. But then how do I have it if I've been taught seeing is believing and don't believe in nothing I can't see? But our God says that the things that I seen are really made up of the things that I can't see so come on you hear what I'm saying so how, I, I, how can I unlearn let me give you the concept Nicodemus came to Christ he said Christ told him man look Nicodemus you won't accept you be born again you will not enter into the kingdom of heaven Nicodemus's understanding was also born okay I know how you get born that's his knowledge. You come through your mama's womb, come out. That's what his knowledge was. But in order for him to get the concept, he, he had to unlearn that. So he was struggling unlearning it. This is, it was good that he at least was trying to unlearn it, but it struggled to unlearn. Because Nicodemus said, well, what do I go? Do I go back to my mother? How do I, do I go back as a child? Do I, how do I do this? How do I go back to be born again? Do I, go, I, I can't go back. He was struggling with unlearning. Now, everything that Jesus was teaching, why do y'all think Jesus walked on water? To destroy disciples' understanding that things were not impossible. Up until that point, they didn't think it was possible. Everything, they, they was limited by their understanding of what's impossible. So he kept doing things that were impossible to get them off of, to relearn them. Come on. Come on, listen to what I'm saying. I'm, this is, I'm, I'm giving y'all this bad anointing. I'm telling y'all. So this is why faith is such a hard concept. Because to really believe, nobody who's paid for an education would put down that education. Because I paid for it. And this is where we get, what do you get prestige for in this world? You get prestige for being educated. All our life, what they tell you? You got to get an education. You got to get, if you get an education. Now we take our kids from spiritual school into natural school so they can get a natural education and they become stupid spiritual. Are y'all there? The reason why the scholars hate, hate us is the same reason why they hate the Pharisees hated the disciples because they did not understand how these unlearned men had more knowledge, wisdom than they had without going to their schools and reading their books. They don't understand that. They were confounding men, and, but remember that, G, that Jesus told them, don't worry about what you're going to say, because I will give you those words in the self-same hour. Now, did they know or did they trust? But, but, but many of us wouldn't have went unless we know what to say. But me knowing counsels his ability to give it to me. That's faith. That's what faith is. If you got to actually know everything, then you ain't believing. He really wants belief. That's why he don't show you everything. What, what are we trying to do? You know why we deceive? Because we try to know everything. We want to know everything. And that's why we always deceive. You, because when God don't show us and we really want to know, we're going to perceive. Which means we're going to try to see something that he ain't showing us because we want to see it that bad. And that's how we get in trouble. 
y'all got what I'm saying but when we are moving on trust then we don't have to see anything our problem we always want to explain to people yeah. so we can look deep <laughs> the main, that's what we do we want to look deep like we were somewhere at the, and for no reason my wife was talking about for no reason this is no reason you didn't need to, the, 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 my wife was saying okay well you know y'all not we, we, y'all great get the casket and everything I see the Lord put in my heart and reminded me that the Holy Spirit brought back to my remembrance where they got caskets said that we can get it for a discounted price but but what what why what what do you need the Holy Ghost to, to remember where they sell caskets what it what it was for now what she wanted was she wanted glory for being deep she probably will hardly ever get something from God because she would always need to know y'all missing the point she would always need to know that's why the Bible says walk by faith not by sight what's the last thing we can do we can't walk by faith that's why before the Lord sends you a spouse he say cast your bread upon the water you can't do it because you need to know that's why you can't let them go because you need to know and because you need to know, you're going to keep working with your knowledge to make it happen. And you're not going to never know was it right or not. That's why I say, cast your bread upon the water. If it's yours, it will return to you after many days. But we don't trust God that it will return. So we're going to use knowledge to make it work and hook it up and make it look like this and that to make it work. And then when it works and it hooks it up and it makes it work, all of a sudden you find out his grace ain't in it. So you got to keep hooking and crooking to make it work. But trust would have been, I can release it if it's not, if it's, I go, I want to see by releasing. But that's not knowledge. That ain't wisdom. Wisdom ain't letting go of nothing. Wisdom is getting everything you can. That's why we can't walk with God. We, we too wise. We too, got too much knowledge. Are y'all there or not there? Now, everything I'm saying, I'm just totally about the Holy Ghost. I would have had, and I have this message. So this, you ought to be pulling on this because this is you totally can get an answer. And what I mean by pulling out the Holy Ghost is when is when you say, Lord, I'm wide open for the truth tonight. He will, he would. While I'm going this way, because I'm open, just going, I'm just going this whatever way he's telling me to go. Then if, if you open and you pull and say, Lord, I really need to know tonight, then he'll then, then the anointing will come your way. And that's how he delivers his path. He sent his word and it. Listen, let me get done. Lord, let me get done. Look at this. He says, and the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die, for God doeth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as God's knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree to be desired to make one to wise. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband, and he did eat seven and the eyes of them both were opened first thing they saw we naked we naked y'all got that the first thing they noticed listen the first thing they noticed with all the knowledge that they just gained was they wasn't good enough Y'all catching what I'm saying? What great knowledge are you getting? It just keeps showing you you ain't. And you will never be. But we want to know. And they ate of the fruit. And, and, and when they say eyes came over, I just believe they lost the, the glory. And they realized we're not good enough. So, they, so now let's run from God. Y'all heard what I'm saying? That's what they gain with all their knowledge. All the knowledge you're getting would keep telling you you're not good enough. Are you there? And because they, feel, they didn't feel good enough, what did they begin to do? Come up with a plan to feel better. So let's sow some fig leaves. See, that's our plan. What if we sow fig leaves together to feel better? About what? We know we, we, know we ain't good enough. Let me go a little deeper. We know we lost something. So, so the cover, so our lives become covering 
what we lost. Trying to show everybody else, trying to cover it from everybody else. But the real issue is we lost something. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Because before they knew, and this is what sin does, the epitome of sin, sin will keep making you feel not good enough, not good enough, not good enough. The whole goal of sin is to make you feel not good enough. But not only is it the goal to make you feel not good enough, but it's the trick of Satan to make you make a plan so that you don't feel not good enough. So you pick up a persona, you pick up a style, you pick up a nickname, you pick up a different character. What are you doing? Covering your nakedness with something that you think is accepted. And so that becomes your lifestyle. You do that long enough, you forget. You forget that you Adam. That's why the Bible says, Adam, where are you? You was the man standing and walking in the presence of God. Where are you? See, when you, if you cover yourself too long, you, y'all ain't ready for this. You'll forget. You'll forget what kind of man of God you really was. You'll forget when you prayed and stayed in the presence of God. you forget when you hungered and thirsted after God because your life has become a life of covering. Covering what? Your sin, your mistakes, your inadequacies. And then you'll be singing a song like, my flaws. You don't really care about my flaws. Why? See, that's the stupidest song in the world. Why are you singing about your flaws? Well, you think this is, you know why you see, you shouldn't see your flaws. You know why you see your flaws? Because of your sin. You, y'all ain't ready for me. So instead of singing about the victory of God and the grace of God, all the music you heard is about my sin, my flaws. Why? Because that's all I see. When I lift my hands to praise you and give you glory, I see my nakedness. And my hands suddenly come down. And after five minutes of this, I'm ready to sit down. Because my flaws. She's singing that song saying, he don't, you don't really care about my flaws. It's not true. Adam said, man, you ain't perfect no more, Adam. What do you mean? I do care. See, that's ungodly stuff they be doing. Now, you know why she's saying that? Because she sees she's big. But because she's focused on her bigness. Now, she's using something to cover her bigness. What is it? Her singing. Now, instead of her understanding that your singing ain't going to... So when you meet her, you see her fig leaf. What is a fig leaf? That's what we have. When people meet you, what do they see? Your fig leaf. What are your fig leaves? What you think is a gift. What you think is a talent. Something that can make them not see you. And you can... Whatever it is you got, that's what you put up. Are you see what I'm saying? And you live your life showing people your fig leaves and you wonder how I don't know about know you. Why well, I always feel about myself? Who? Because you never show people you. Yeah. One of the main things I tell my wife all the time when I meet people, people can't, people that hear me preach and they see all the messages and they see the anointing on my life, don't you know they expect me to be phony? They expect me to be not real. They expect me to be religious. That's a better word. And they get around me and I, and I start talking straight talk and they almost just taken back like, like, what the prophesy to me? What the, to, what the deep? Something deep. Say something deep. They can't take the fact that I don't do that. I, I don't lead with my gift. I don't lead with that because that'll make. Because that's just the fig leaves. You will never know me. That's why Adam. God said, Adam, where are you? It ain't that I don't see your fig leaves. But now you hiding from me. So you can lose yourself. Yeah, yeah. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And so the whole goal of, of, of Christ was to make you transparent. So you could once, listen, listen to me, listen to me. So you can once again behold your nakedness and not be ashamed of it. Transparency. I can be transparent again. I can be me again and not be ashamed of it. But your shame of your transparency makes you cover it. And you spend your life building something that's not you. 
And after a while, you figure that out because you start wanting something called intimacy. Into me, see. You realize all your relationships, you never had that because they, the, they was loving your leaves. They don't know. And then you get, you know why you arguing mad at them? Because in the back of your mind, you know. You don't know me. You don't know me for real. You don't even know how I really think. Because all I've given you is my leaves. And so like Adam, you need to be located. This is what the anointed word does. <laughs> Locate you. It's not that Adam didn't know, God didn't know where Adam was. Adam had lost Adam. You lost yourself. Why? Because you, you covered. You covered you. At first, the I was covering you. The glory was covering you. Now you have covered yourself. Is this too much? No. Let me get done. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord amongst the trees of the garden. And now this is the real issue that I, I got to close. I got to close. Let me tell y'all what they did. This is what most of us are doing. They understood they were hiding from God, right? And in their hiding, I see what I'm trying to say. Got to get the words for it. Camouflage. They were hiding amongst the trees because they was camouflaged. They had a covering of what the trees are covered with. So they, that's why they hid amongst the trees because they was actually covered with the leaves. This is why you around who you around. This is why your friends are who they are, and you seem to pick certain people. It's because they, they, they help you camouflage. Amongst these, amongst the trees, we all got leaves. <laughs> and as long as we amongst, as long as we all got leaves, then we all camouflaged. Thinking that if I had in the trees with the leaves, maybe God would mistake me for the tree. And even the trees know. The trees know. You only got the leaves. But you're not one of us. And that's why the people you run with will tell you all the time, what you doing here? This ain't who you are. People, I, I remember doing it years ago. Be around folks, be drunk and stuff. People, well, you ain't supposed to be here. We be drunk, but they'll come out and say stuff like, hey, what you doing here? I'm, I was camouflaging. That explains your friends and who you run with. You hiding amongst the trees. <laughs> That's a good word within itself. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's who your Facebook people are. You hiding amongst them trees. People who all got the same thoughts and think like you and operate like you because you hope that you can be old that now you can build a world you can build your own world where you are accepted remember you running from God so you got to build your world to where you are accepted so I need to go around the trees blend in with them because I understand when the holy God show up he gonna recognize I ain't like you no more. I'm not like you no more. That's what happened to y'all. You look in the mirror and you be like, God, I ain't like you no more. I used to be close to you. I, could, I knew I had resemblance of you. Now I don't feel like I don't know you no more. And you'll find that you done created an atmosphere of carnal people or weak people. And these are your camouflage. As long as you're around them, you, you fit in. That's why y'all run with people who deep. People deep. People that's really spiritual see your leaves. That's why you stay with carnal folk. 
Y'all, y'all there or not? Let me get done. I'm gonna get done. Listen, oh Lord, I gotta let me get done. Look, he says, he says, and and he said, listen, he said, and and and, and he said, verse ten. No, verse nine. And the Lord called on Adam and said, said, said Adam uh, said, where, said unto him, where art thou? And he said, I heard that voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid. And I can just tear this whole thing up. And I hid myself. And he said, who told you you was naked? Now this is where I want to show y'all something. Before he ate, there was one voice that was dominant in his life. That's the reason why God said, who, where does other voice come from? Where does other voice, you, had, you didn't have no other voice. Now you hear another voice and all for the rest of, now the curse that you have brought upon man, and he's going to always be torn between two voices. Are y'all, <laughs> Paul said, when I would do good, evil is always, thank you, Adam. That's what you received. Because the knowledge of good and evil was the ability to hurt the demonic world. <laughs> so now I was only hearing the things of God. Notice he still recognized God's voice. Did Y'all didn't catch that, did he not? He still recognized God's voice. But that was enough. That's why God said, "What you for you to have this garment on? You listening to something that you never listened to before, and for the rest of your life you'll be torn between two voices, and you'll always have to know: was it God? Is this God? And instead of you living by divine direction, through following and trust." You're going to have to get knowledge. And you're going to live by your knowledge. And you'll, ne- and you'll always be, no matter how spiritual you think you are, you'll always be saying, was that God? Was that not God? Was that God? Was that not God? Was that God? Was that not God? Because your sin, this sin, has brought another voice. A frequency that you didn't hear at first. I told you we were talking about the, se- the serpent frequency. Yeah. You didn't hear that at first, man. Now you hear this, you hear this signal all the time. And this signal constantly is fighting for your attention and fighting. And now and you can't do nothing. And the only thing that calms the beast is when you meditate in my word and you pray and then you begin to hear my voice in worship. You begin to hear my voice, and my voice becomes dominant for that brief time. <laughs> for that brief time. So instead of me and you being 